As for the companions of the beloved sallallahu alayhi wasallam, they displayed the same level of keenness to ensure that their hearts remained pure. Look at, for example, how the companions would ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam various questions taking the initiative. They wouldn't wait for an advice to be given to them. They would say to him, Awsini, please give me advice. How can we improve our internal state of affairs? What can we do? Give us advice. One of them, he said to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, Aizni wa awjiz, O Messenger of Allah, give me advice, but please keep it concise. He gave him a three-part bit of advice. If you adhere to it, watch how success will come into our lives. He said to him, إِذَا قُمْتَ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ فَصَلِّ صَلَاةَ الْمُوَدِّعَ When you get up to pray, treat it as if it's your farewell prayer. Number two, لا تكلم بكلام تعتذر منه غدا. Beware of saying something that will necessitate an apology tomorrow. وَأَجِمِ عِلِيَأْسَ مِمَّا فِي أَيْدِ النَّاسِ And never look at what the hands of people possess. Be careless towards it. So look at how the Sahaba, they came to him. Advise me, O Messenger of Allah. عِذْنِ مَوْعِذَ مَوْعِذَ goes to the heart. وَقُلْ لَهُمْ فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ قَوْلًا بَلِيغًا Another Sahabi, Sa'id ibn Yazid al-Azdi, he comes to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, أَوْصِنِي Advise me, O Messenger of Allah. Look at the keenness. He said to him, أُوصِيكَ أَن تَسْتَحِي مِنَ اللَّهِ كَمَا تَسْتَحِي مِنَ الرَّجُلِ الصَّالِحِ he said, my advice to you is that you are shy of Allah. Be shy of Allah the same way that you are shy from the righteous man in your community. Do you see, dear brothers and sisters? And Abu Darda, the companion, he said that Abdullah ibn Rawaha, the companion, by the way, footnote, who is Abdullah ibn Rawaha? The Sahabi who died in which battle? The battle of Mu'tah. So here you have a shaheed martyr who's talking. You want to know how he ascended those heights? Listen to what his day-to-day -day looked like. Abdullah ibn Rawaha would take the hand of Abu Darda and he would say to him, Ta'ala, nu'min sa'a. Come with me. Let us increase our iman together for a moment. Allahu Akbar. Many companions would say this to one another. Come with me for a moment. Let's just interrupt the business for just a second. Let us increase our iman for a moment. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said the companions would sometimes gather in a halaqa and Amir al-Mu'mineen Umar, he would say to Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, you know Abu Musa who would recite Qur'an and angels would make themselves present. And he would say, Abu Musa, recite to us some Qur'an, help us soften our hearts. And a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim, bismillahir rahman al-rahim. He begins his recitation and the sahaba are just there absorbing the kalam, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you see their keenness, brothers and sisters, to never allow that internal compass to go south? In fact, Ibn Abi Mulayka attacked he said about the companions, أَدْرَكْتُ ثَلَاثِينَ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم كُلُّهُمْ يَخَافُ النِّفَاقَ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ I met 30 companions of the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام Every one of them feared hypocrisy for his heart. Every one of them feared hypocrisy, the prospect of being a munafiq. These are qulubun hayya, lively hearts that are brimming with life and light. 